Welcome to another episode, episode 20 of Talking Small Press Comics with Steve Keeter and myself, Larned Justin. So once again, we've got a bunch of comics to talk about. Kind of excited. Uh, I think we ought to jump right into it. <laughs> Here's the first Okay. One. This is the first one we're looking at. And this is Terry Flippo's Axel and Alex. And what I noticed about this, I wanted to say something about this. Small press comics are competing with so many other things. I mean, movies, television, uh, comic books, graphic novels, you name it. Small press comics are probably at the bottom of that list. So you have to be innovative to be able to do something different. And I think Terry has done it with this crossover series. There's four books in this crossover series. And he's done something you couldn't do in a movie. You couldn't do it on a TV show. His characters have actually gone into limbo. And they are traveling in limbo looking for their creator. Now, not the normal creator you would think about. They're looking for the creator that drew them and invented uh -huh. them. So he's an artist. And that's what they're looking for. And the, these mm -hmm. four uh, issues, there's four issues, are their travels all through time and space looking for their creator. And what they run into is all kinds of small press uh, comic people, characters, comic characters that other people have come up with, and they run into them all. Didn't you so they're traveling, to, they're traveling to a small press multiverse. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're traveling right. and meeting all kinds of small press characters that, you know, yeah. other artists have created. Yeah, there's a good example. Of a lot of them are on, on the third issue. Mm -hmm. um, Terry Flippo, there's a. I have to keep, I have to look back. Uh, he's got a list of everybody. Uh, yeah. There's Miracle Force uh, by Jerry Smith. Here they are. They make an appearance in that third issue. Um, there Step, is. Um, Steppenwolf is there. Mm hmm. By Byron Black. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Roman Steppenwolf, Lady Spectra and Sparky, they're in here somewhere uh, by uh, J. Kevin Carrier. Isn't the Raven in there also by Steve yeah. Keeter? Uh, he is in there. That was a surprise yeah, to yes. me. I didn't know about that one. Yeah. Where, where, where is he? Let me find him. <laughs> okay, find the Raven. Surprise. Um, but um, if I had known you know, that soon, well, you know, I'm not. Um, Terry, you didn't tell me you were going to use my character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you told any of the guys. It's a but surprise it's okay. for everybody. Okay, I'm, I'm actually I'm very flattered and I'm very honored. And I it, and he did the um, let's see the Raven. Uh, he does the costume redesign Raven, uh, which uh, Doug uh, Doug Freeman redesigned the costume. Uh huh. Um, and I can't find that page for the life of me. Well, you never can find what you're looking for, I know. There he is. All the time, there he is. But, um, uh, they're traveling through, and they come across the raven. And right away, I was reading through this, and I saw this, and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I know that guy. And and he does, uh, and Terry, he does give us credit at the end. He gives everybody credit yeah. uh, for the characters they created. And, uh, and Terry's artwork story. is terrific. As always, yeah, yeah he's uh, always been such an excellent artist, and he uh, he just he just loves doing small press comics. Oh and man, says and, something and, uh, about, uh, the time it here. takes to draw these. I mean, um, he puts a lot of detail into his drawings, and uh, always, and they're just terrific. <laughs> but it's such a cool idea because. You know, you think everything's been done and all that. Well, this is completely different. And it's well worth, and I don't know um, 
what kind of a price he has on these. I don't think he says, but I would send them, you know, five or six dollars and get maybe uh, all four of them. I don't know. Yep. The Just color guess, covers are but, outstanding. Yeah. Here's some action art in black and white from the inside of a crossover part four. Mm hmm. Yeah. Axel and Alex. Uh, Axel is a, a robot, thus Axel, and Alex is Alex uh, his is boy. Yeah. And he's been doing now, these comics for a long, long time. I with don't, Axel. It would be great to be able to give away the ending, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I had a lot to say about the ending, but I can't say it because it would ruin it for everybody else. So I'm not going to tell you the ending. You'll have to figure that out. You have to yeah. buy the books or send for them or ask Terry for them or trade for them or do something, mm -hmm. get them and find out what happens with all these characters. Okay, I got a price. I got a price. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, he sent me a, a message note here. I still have a few copies of each book remaining. Folks can order all four for $15. Okay. Check, so, uh, he has a PayPal, a JMFLIP4, JMFLIP4 at Verizon.net, so you can order it uh, online. But uh, $15 a ship, so probably about okay. $6 or $4 uh, per issue. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. Well worth and it. I like, I like what cool. uh, Terry says at the end, at the end of the fourth issue, uh, he has an editorial. At the end of it, he says, this story is dedicated to small press creators everywhere. To mm -hmm. create life on the page every day, not for fame or fortune, but out of love for our chosen medium. Keep on doing what you love. There you go. That's, that's, that's in the small press. Yeah, and when I met, when I try to mention that once in a while, I come up, I come at work, you know, and, mm -hmm. and people are like, what do you do in your spare time? Well, I, you know, I do comics and stuff, and so then they say, what? They always say, do you make any money at it? And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Once, well, yeah, it's hard to, it's once hard to I did uh, a seminar at our local library uh, on small press comics, and the main question was, how much money can you make? I said, you can't make a dime. Nothing. You won't make, you'll cost yourself money, but you won't make any money at all. At that mm -hmm. point, most everybody quit listening to me. <laughs> right. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. <laughs> but if you're a small press creator, you get it. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's thousands of us, you know, and stuff. And uh, you know, in the old days, everybody was like aspiring to work for DC or Marvel or whatever, one of the big yeah. companies, you know. Well, that's like, that's years, like you know, uh, becoming a professional baseball player. You have the same <laughs> chance. That's true. Really you have about the same chance. Yeah. yeah. And you realize not everybody can do that. Not everybody's going to yeah. make it to that. But you, yeah. but you may make it to a level at least up to that or, or better. A mm -hmm. lot of small producers are as good or better. I mean, seriously, there's mm -hmm. some of the greatest artists around are in the small press. They're not in the mainstream comics. And there are some yeah. crappy artists in mainstream comics too, you know. Well, let's look so, at let's look at this one. Yep. Now that's a small press comic. Now look at that. That's Rob Haynes. Rob Haynes. My old buddy uh Randy Reynaldo. Uh, Randy mm -hmm. Ronaldo is the artist and the story is about Rob Haynes and his adventures. But look at the artwork once again. Yeah. It's that, well, Rob, I've known Randy for a long time. Uh, oh, yeah. we, met at the, we met at the uh, Chicago convention, not the Chicago convention, the San Diego convention, 20 years after the Chicago convention, about 10 years ago. There's a video up somewhere of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, but uh, Randy, he's 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 always been a brilliant artist. Uh, he's a, he's yeah. a former member of the UFO from way back, I guess <laughs> the seventies or the eighties, maybe maybe more of the eighties. But uh, this is you know sort of influenced by Steve Canyon. Uh, you can I see would a lot say of a little bit, maybe maybe a yeah. little, yeah. Great yeah. story. Um, and, uh, switches between World War Two and the present time. Uh, right. Rob Hames, he works for a sort of a secret service, a security mm -hmm. intelligence called Justice International uh, with a few other people. And there's a lot of intrigue going on here. And the story does switch uh, yeah. from World War II. Yeah, there's and, a, uh, Nazi gold uh, involved and, uh, you know, a lot of intrigue. Rob of him. You see him on the cover. Sergeant Haynes and Hell Patroon, a, a Hell a Platoon. 
Uh, they were influenced uh, by, uh, I believe, Sergeant Rock. He mentions it somewhere in there. Sergeant oh, Rock he? and the BBC okay. War Comics. Yeah. Yes. So, um, um, but, you know, Rob, Rob also has a clean style, uh, but it's very much, uh, very much influenced by Milk Kniff, I believe. Mm-hmm. And always has been, th- this story's gone on for years and years and years, you know. Uh, good. It's uh, 24 then, pages long. Uh, yeah. Very professionally, you know. Right. They're actually looking for Nazi gold. Yeah, they're. Uh, that's why it switches back and forth between mm-hmm. World War II and the present yeah. time because uh, the Nazi gold didn't go away. It's still around, and they're looking for it. <laughs> they're looking for it, and there's these neo-Nazis, yeah. uh, one of whom, the grandfather, uh was uh, around back in those days in Germany and uh, you know, they're in France and they're looking for this gold. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that guy's it, grandson looks exactly like he did. It shows him exactly in like World him. War II and then the grandson. They, they look yeah. Like yeah. And it's a classic battle of good versus evil. And Rob, yeah. Rob runs into evil and he runs, and like, here, here, they, you know, they, they tried to knock his car off the road. They didn't, they didn't in fact knock his car off the road. And he survived that. Yeah. yeah. Great story. Later on, he ends up Pretty in the hospital. Well There's a little bit of a love triangle in here, too. This is number um, 22, by the way. So there's a bunch yeah. more. And this one is $3.99 U.S. and $4.99 in Canada, where everything costs more. And I never knew, I never knew, I, I've known about Rob and, I mean, uh, Randy and, uh, Rob Himes and WCG Comics, but he never really spelled it out until now. I never knew that st- that stood for War Comics Group. I, yeah, I War know, Comics Group. Yeah. yeah. You know, I knew that Rob Hot, Rob Haynes was kind of an adventurer and everything, but uh, mm-hmm. I didn't know, you know, that uh, yeah, it's got it right across the top. Such a factor in this comic, and it's it's yeah. extremely well written, extremely well drawn, and yeah. uh, just a little triumph from a great artist and writer. Yep. Yep, very well done. Beautiful. And now for yep. something completely different. <laughs> That's for sure. Completely different. This is Meanwhile. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, volume number 10. Now, right. I'm not sure how to explain this. Um. It's from Ringling College, because Gary Barker is a, uh, is he a professor there at Ringling College? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a teacher, and um, okay. each, uh, I think every semester, uh, they have a new group of students, and, uh, you know, they have courses in comic book art and illustration and stuff, and it's, it's a Ringling College of Art and Illustration, so they do all kinds of illustration. Uh, but uh, one thing they do is they have all the students um create a comic together and yeah. each student contributes two pages okay and uh they can go anywhere they want to it thus you know you have something going on and uh meanwhile something else is going on for another two weeks two pages and meanwhile something else go- goes on and and it, none of it is really connected at all it's oh. just an it's exploration actually- of all these different Fantasy world. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, you can't really follow any kind of a story. Most of it does not have any uh, word balloons or anything like that. But it's just beautiful the artwork. It's beautiful. It's From just the students. stunning artwork by the students. Anything you look at, and it's beautifully reproduced on, on right. uh, quality stock paper in full color. Yeah. yeah. It's and really, you know, each person has their own visage, uh, vision, yeah. and that's what it's really all about, is shaka- uh, showcasing these students and their different visions, Yeah. Uh, comic book artwork. And uh, there's just so much great stuff here, it's hard to go. I mean, it goes from there's science fiction. There's a kind of fantasy. a scary cover there on that one. Yeah. That's number 12. And what's cool yeah. about it is he does tell you who the artists are. And if you mm-hmm. look on the page here. I know it's, it shows up on here very well, but 
right on that page, you will tell you who the artists are and which stories they did. But it's part of the artwork, <laughs> the way he did that. Very cool. Yep. A lot of great stuff here. Lots of neat stuff. Uh, There's a lady who loves just, just kind of a flower. I would, I would call it an art zine, you know, is what it really is. It's not a, not a story, but it is an art zine, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And it shows off the students' work. But, I, you know, their work is a little bit similar, unless I'm seeing some of the same artists over but uh, some of the work is similar. There's some dinosaur. I mean, it goes through all kinds of different fantasy scenarios. Right. Anything that's in that particular uh, creator's uh, mind, yeah, you know, they they can show it off here in the issue, and then they put it all together. And he's, and uh, really, uh, Gary told me there's no cover price on this. If you want to order any copy, I would suggest uh, just. I would say, whew. I mean, well, I would I'll say, put his, uh, company, I'll, put his contact, <clears throat> I'll put his contact info down in the description. Uh, it is Ringling yeah. College of Art and Design. And uh, write to them, and uh, they may send you some of these, and they're really, really beautiful. Look at the back cover of this. Yeah. Really yeah. neat. I mean, there's not a bad illustration in the entire. No, uh, you know, no. no. Um, just beautiful. I, mean, I you wonder go to, how you qualify to get into that school. No. <laughs> I wonder if <laughs> anybody can just get in, or how it goes works. from cartoony artwork to creepy artwork. Yeah. Um, to fantastic science fiction artwork, uh, to all sorts of stuff, and uh, uh, highly recommended. Uh, as you know, Gary Barker, uh, not only is he a teacher, he's also one of the artists on the Garfield uh, uh, newspaper strip. Uh, mm -hmm. He's been doing the Sunday Garfield strip for years. Oh. And he also drew uh, uh, the Garfield comics for a few years. I have a few issues of Garfield that uh, he sent to me, and uh, he signed them. And uh, uh, I, I treasure those issues. Oh, Gary's sure. a, good, yeah. he's a good guy, a great artist. He Sometimes he pops up at a convention. Mm -hmm. I first met him. Con, uh, back in uh, 2004 or 5 or 6 somewhere in there mm -hmm. and uh, just a great guy and um, um, you couldn't pick a better guy to be a better influence to a bunch of people there you uh, go. Yeah. fantastic imagination to create fantastic comics here's, so, here's a guy he's got who these doesn't students himself. doing some great work so uh, <laughs> yes indeed yes, something's indeed. happening yep Yep. Now, do you want to know what happened to me today? Oh, yeah. Of course. We can change the subject for a moment. We're, out of, we're not really out of comics. we got a lot of comics. we got comics, but we're kind of holding some of them back uh, <laughs> for the next show. <laughs> we don't want to now, use everything up in one show, you know. <laughs> I've been ordering stuff from Amazon.com for a while, and I ordered some comic book bags. Uh -huh. I did finally find them. But for some reason, you know about porch pirates, right? Yeah. Um, it's a pretty decent neighborhood, so you don't, I don't think anybody, there's any, any intentional porch pirates. But I, a couple of the packages that I've ordered have ended up at my neighbor's house next door. Um, the, the numbers on the house are very similar. So mm -hmm. the mailman keeps getting mixed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday I saw that this package had been delivered with these comic book bags, but I didn't get it. And I, and I said, I wonder if. I wonder if it went over there again, because the last time uh, the mailman delivered something, I walked by there and I saw it propped up against their front door. So I walked yeah. up and grabbed it. Was my name, that's my package. So I yeah. back to the house. Anyway, I found these comic bags this morning outside uh, uh, the neighbor's house uh, in the driveway. Oh, my yeah, gosh. And they had opened it up and they looked inside. They wanted to see what it was. I guess they didn't want comic book bags. Okay, so they didn't, they didn't bring it over to you? No, After they, they didn't bring it over. got your name on it, and they didn't bring it over to you. Mm. Well, I'm, nice. going to have, I'm going to have to mention this to those people. I would think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that gets the comic book bags. I'm yeah. the comic book guy that lives next if, door. If it's a comic book bag, it goes to you, not them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel. 
Another thing I want to mention, I just got a package, and uh, this isn't for review or anything, but I just got a package from an old friend of mine, uh, Brent Anderson. Mm-hmm. And Brent, uh, some of you may know, Brent Anderson, well, he, he did. He used to draw uh, comics back in the 1970s. He, drew, uh, he did work, well, he, he's been drawing ever since the 1970s. He's still drawing. Um, he did the cover for one of my first zines, Mantra Number 1. Oh, way back then. Way back. Uh huh. Used to be in a, back in 74, 75. What was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, he also did the cover for Mantra number three. Wow. Ooh, look at that. You know? but, in, but after that, uh, Brett, uh, he went pro, quite frankly. And he's been doing work for Marvel and DC mm. and Eclipse Comics, Image Comics, Now Comics, Pacific Comics. Uh, he did Kesar uh, for a Marvel, and uh, you know I just happened to have his biography <laughs> up on my other computer screen. But I just wanted to say, you know, I, I sent him a few comics. I got a hold of his address, mm-hmm. and uh, I sent him a few of, of my recent comics, and it it brought back uh, memories to him of uh, the stuff that he used to do. He also did the X Men, uh, God Loves Man Kills, the graphic novel. Uh, he did a lot of stuff. Um, uh, Astro City, which he oh, did with Kurt Busiek, wow. yeah. which had the cover of uh, Alex Jones. That was uh, Brent Anderson's artwork. Wow. Um, but he's an old pal of mine, and I haven't heard from him in a, a lot of years. Mm-hmm. And um, again, I think I got either I got an email from him or something, but but we uh, got back in touch, and uh, uh, I sent him a few of my comics. And he sent me a few of his stuff. It's like wow. these are Ashton comics, comics which I don't think have ever appeared anywhere really. I think he just made these, and they haven't been copyrighted or anything. But he sent me a few of these comics of his, and it's my old pal Brent. Wow. You know. Wow. And uh, and he signed all these. Yeah. It's pretty nice, you know. Signed these wow. for Steve at the top, and oh, he yeah. signed it at the bottom. Wow. And. Uh, but it looks like he does some stuff that's kind of like small press stuff. Stuff that he That's just what I was going to say. Do. It looks like he, you know, self-published that. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't... Oh. As he said, there are Ashcan comics, and Ashcan comics are comics that haven't been copyrighted or anything. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just stuff he did for the heck of it. And wow. Nice to know that, you know, look at the cover on this one. Oh, neat. Wow. But, you know, he's doing stuff, and um, still is a... Well, I knew I knew he was a great artist. Um, I think Kazar for Marvel. I think it was the most professional comic work he did back in the seventies. Mm. He used to make it, uh, draw uh, barbarian Conan type of stuff. Uh, so it was good to hear from him. I just wanted to mention that Brent. If you're out there watching, I just want to mention how much uh, I do appreciate it. Yeah, uh, really. Nice. Just let me your work. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Okay. Just something well, I thought I'd I thought I'd toss out there. Okay, we have got a next time a big show. So uh this one was a little uh fewer comics, but next time we're back with a bunch. <laughs> so make sure you uh subscribe and mm-hmm. use that bell notification uh button so that you know you get an email when our next video is up. Because it will yeah, probably be again, up in about a week. Yeah. <laughs> once again, folks, we have to apologize if there's any technical problems, if especially the sound. Uh, I'm I'm using my cell phone on this because I had a problem with my laptop. If the sound seems a little muddy, we'll, we'll have that we'll have that corrected by next time. Yeah, uh, I also had a little problem. I have a webcam that I normally use. This is it, but it wouldn't work. It just did not come on. So I'm using, this is through my laptop. Uh, probably looks a little different to me. It looks a little dark. Maybe I can fix that in post. I don't know. But anyway, hopefully next time we will be back without any problems. <laughs> and we will see you then. Bye. Yes, indeed. Live long and prosper. <laughs>